Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I am sitting here watching one of the SEC storied shows about Charles Barkley, Bo Jackson, and Frank Thomas that all went to Auburn. I was watching Bo Jackson run uh, when he played football in this show. <laughs> I can't imagine, one, having to try to catch him, and two, if you do catch him, what it must have been like to try to get to get hit by that guy. He was a monster. Okay, I'm going to start this one off with uh, this article. This is pretty pretty wild if you really think about it. Boeing customers cancel a staggering 150 max plane orders, deepening crisis as as you know that word that I can't say. Royals Air Travel. It says they've canceled 150 of its 737 MAX planes in March. Adding to the company's woes, this right here, with, without, without us living in bailed out nation, bailed out world, this is the end of Boeing. In, in, in the real world of capitalism, if we had a, free, a real free market, these guys are done right here. And no telling how many others are done. But you, the U.S. government can only do so much, folks. At some point, you're going to see some major companies go down as a result of all this. They're not going to be able to save everyone. This is going to be a really bad situation. All right. Um, Joker tweeted this out. Hard times ahead. Eurozone to be hit the hardest, says CNBC. So the chances that SPX is not bottomed is high. Hopium says otherwise. USD index is, is strong. Gold, Bitcoin, XRP, recession 2020. I think it's worse than a recession. From CNBC, IMS slashes growth forecast says world will very likely experience worst recession since the 1930s. They're, they're just not calling it what it really is, which is the greatest of depressions. Now, I am Legion did a pretty cool thread here. I wanted to start right here. Uh, Takahiro Inaba from NTT Data. Um, and he's got his name right here. And then he's, oh, here, let me go back. Says, who will work on Quilt? Everest, NTT Data, and Ripple are committed full-time engineering resources, res resources to ensure the success of this project. The main contributors are this guy, Adrian Hope Bailey from Ripple, Isaac, however you say that name, from Everest, which is owned by NTT Data. Um, I have years of experience in IT system development, finance, public and telecommunications sectors, and NTT data. Panel discussion, how Hyperledger is making blockchain technology a reality, moderated by this guy at the Linux Foundation. Then let's go down through his thread here. Friday, July 15th, trading derivatives on Hyperledger. Um, and then it's got SBI, okay, okay. SBI BITS is what that's called. From our vision, Yoshi, Yoshitaka Katao, president and CEO and founder of SBI Holdings. SBI Bits was established in July 2015 as the core of SBI Holdings FinTech strategy. Since then, um, SBI Bits has gathered IT experts from all around the world. We currently boast an international working environment of employees from over 40 countries. Um, as you go down here, it says we also established SBI Bits uh, in China, it looks like, um, uh, aims to spread the latest fintech to the whole of Asia and the rest of the world, contribute to the advancement of cutting edge technology. So you can see where all of this is going on. Oh, didn't mean to pull that back up. All right, so that's a pretty, that's a pretty good thread there by I Am Legion. Now, um, this was a, a tweet I wanted to show you. G7 endorses forgiveness of debt for poor nations, differs on how Let's see what this says. Oh, this is what I wanted to show you. This is some, this guy replied to his own tweet with this, New World Order. A, what does that say? I can't read all of that. But anyway, it says something, I think it says a New World Order cryptocurrency token will be created that will allow all nations to participate in a worldwide debt jubilee. Any nation that participates in the debt jubilee will have their national debt 
moved into the new world order cryptocurrency token. The new world order will be the custodian of the token. Participating nations will have their debt obligations suspended. There will be rules. A single, single new world order currency exchange and the remittance network will be established in order to have the debt forgiven. All nations will agree to only use the new exchange. Each nation's existing currency will, will become a digital stable coin. No other exchange can be used for a nation's stable coin token. Any violation will result in, in being excluded from the New World Order economy of all things. Sincerely, the New World Order. I have no idea where this is coming from, but I thought it was interesting enough to read to you. Okay, now I told you in my last video that ECOSSEXRP1 had sent me this really interesting article to me, um, and it's about Anna Boten, Santander Bank Chairman and Art Collector Anna Patricia Boten appointed to International Monetary Fund Advisory Board. The group has been formed to tackle major financial issues, including the current events and its global global economic impact. Um, I, I wanted to go. But she says these steps are sadly, the, let's see, exceptions to the rule. She adds, all too often, national interest has trumpeted the need, um, trumped the need for Europe wide action. Nation states have defaulted to their traditional positions, exposing the political fault lines across the continent. Um, and then I wanted to show you this down here, and I was going to get into, show you one of the people that is on this thing um, with her. Um, this is the, it's the IMF, it's an advisory board that was put together because of the current situation. And it says other members include these people. Um, this person, which I'm not going to try to pronounce that name, Kevin Rudd. But then I wanted to focus in on Christine Forbes. But first, I wanted to go through who, um, a little more about who exactly Anna Boten is, because they don't have a whole, a whole lot of people on this advisory board. Let's see, just remind some of you out there, and some of you probably have not seen any of this, who Anna Boat is. How much potential there this is. is so that tells you how much potential there is. You know, we are uh, launching One Pay Effects, which is a block blockchain based um, retail cross border payment with Ripple, by the way, a US company that's coming to the US. We're going to do Open Bank. There's a lot of things that. And we created the North America region, Mexico, U.S., so we're now running a lot of these businesses together. So you'll see good results in the coming years. Okay, that's the Anna Boten we're talking about. That this differs from current arrangements that most banks would offer in that it's transparent what you're going to be able to get for your money in foreign exchange rates. Yes. As you say, it's zero commission. And also it happens straight away rather than having to wait two or three days. Yes. In, in some cases like overseas uh, right now might be next day, but UK versus the continent is the same day. It takes basically a few hours, I understand, as of now. By the way, by the summer we're working so that this is instant. And because it's blockchain based, you know exactly the amount of euros you get on the other side, which is super important. As of today, it's several days, even for some of the fintech companies that are offering this, um, it takes several days, but in our case, the same day. And you've collaborated with Ripple to provide the blockchain mm -hmm. kind of rails, if you like, for this service. What are the limitations of that? Because one of the drawbacks of blockchain as it's currently been developed is that it's capacity limited, isn't it? So how much of a drawback is that for you? So for foreign exchange payments, given the volumes we have, that is not a limitation. So actually, with this new initiative that is already in place, we are actually covering 50% of all the FX payments that the Santander Group does annually. And it works really well because the rails that we're using, which, as you say, we've collaborated with Ripple, we've been testing those for two years, actually with our own employees, and it works, it's safe, it's fully compliant, and obviously we've made sure we comply with all local regulations, so you're in safe hands. Now, currently, this service is only going to be available to Santander customers in one of the countries that you mentioned, but you're considering maybe spinning it out as something broader-based as a separate app for all comers? Absolutely, yes. But let me just make clear that in the case of San UK customers, you can actually transfer euros to any other bank in Europe. So it depends on the countries, but in the case of San UK, we can actually do that with Europe. And we're working to incorporate other countries like Portugal and others very soon. We are working to make it accessible also to small companies. As of today, it's only individuals. And we're working, as you say, to make this also at some point, I don't have a timing for that, a separate app. So it's open market payments. And so we're very excited about customers. OK, 
Okay, so there's another clip of Anna Boten, and then here's another. The payments, Santander has launched one pay FX, which is basically offering you as a consumer the same price. I hope I'm right because things change every day. Last time I checked, you can do FX transfers real time between the UK and continental Europe. You can actually do Poland, Brazil, Chile through Santander, same cost as TransferWise. You know, this is my business, and this is not just TransferWise, this is everybody in the, in the sort of big company space that is coming to do that. And that is the reason why we need to really think about what is real reciprocity. The devil is in the detail and in timing. And this is super important, by the way. All right, so that is, um, that's Anna Boten as well. And this, finally, I wanted to show you this one, which I've shown you before. I'm not gonna show you the video. I'm just gonna go through this. Uh, Banco Santander, this is her when she's at the Economic Club of New York. Remember, Brad Garlinghouse is in the audience, and then he speaks the next day. Not just anybody gets to go and speak at the Economic Club of New York. Um, it says, here's just a few quotes that this Goldface XRP put up. Um, we found a great company named Ripple. Ripple, we invested in Ripple. If you open up banking, you have to open up data in a symmetrical way. Um, makes things a level playing field, move, hand, move hands. Um, and then it goes on, um, there was another one. If I have an extra 500 million, maybe I could support Ripple. In other words, she was asking, while Brad Carlinghouse is in the audience, said she would invest another 500 million if she had it. <laughs> I'm sure she's got it, but I think that she was being funny, but, the, but it was pretty wild. Okay, now let's go back to this. I, I just wanted to look at some of these people I'm just going to look at Kristen Forbes right here. I wanted to show you who Kristen Forbes is. Um, here's her Wikipedia page. Now, this is just another person that's on that IMF advisory council that's specifically for the current events. So she's an MIT uh, Sloan. She's a professor at MIT is what she is. But if you go down, it's, it's what I keep telling you. All of these people are connected. All of them are in the same club. They're all in the same involved in the World Economic Forum, you name it, the Treasury Department, they're all, and all roads lead back to Ripple somehow, some way. Um, and so, so I wanted to show you this. She was in the Treasury, she it says, uh, she was hired by John B. T Taylor, um, Under Secretary of in International Affairs at the U.S. Treasury Department to serve um, Office of International Affairs as Deputy Assistant Secretary of Quantitative Policy Analysis. Um, so, and then she was on the head of the Council of Economic Advisors after confirmation by the U.S. Senate um, in the, that was in the Bush administration. Then if you go uh, down here, it, it, it kind of shows you some, some of the sh things she's been involved with. First, in May 2014, she was appointed to the United Kingdom's Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee. So she's advising the Bank of England for one thing. And then, um, let's see what else she's done. She is currently on this, this. She's a member of the Aspen Economic Strategy Group. Condoleezza Rice is on that, by the way. The Bellagio Group, which I'll show you here in a minute what that is, and that'll surprise you. She's on the Council of Foreign Relations. We've talked about that. She's also a member of the Economic Advisory Panel for the New York Federal Reserve Bank. So don't forget that one. Um, so anyway, let's let's go forward and kind of look at some of this. So she's an MIT professor. So the first thing that came up when I was looking around, here's what MIT students will learn in the new blockchain and money class. Now you remember who's running the MIT blockchain um, school, or not school, but classes. That's why this fall, MIT's Gary Gensler, remember Gary Gensler? Now he, this is the same Gary Gensler who in 2019, was running digital currency wars, a national security crisis simulation with, remember him? Let's go back just a tad so you can see all these guys. Um, trying to get the right screen up here. Anyway, it's not wanting to cooperate. But um, uh, Larry uh, Summers, remember Larry Summers from the digital currency group did those wars with him. And I'm hoping that my computer's not slowing down here, but we're working on it. But anyway, so Gary Gensler runs the MIT blockchain school, this blockchain and money classes. And you'll remember him. He's, he's also the same guy who came to a podium out of nowhere. He's an ex-CFTC guy, came to a podium out of nowhere. 
in 2018 and declared that he thought XRP and Ethereum were securities while Bitcoin was not. I've always thought that that was just a red herring being thrown out there. Um, and then down here, it says, comment from industry experts. It says, Gensler is still putting the finishing touches on his syllabus. And while the class won't be heavy on guest speakers, he still plans to tap into the MIT community for commentary. Down here, it says, um, the director of MIT, and it says, Christine Forbes, for a session exploring blockchain and central banking. Gensler also asked Jeff Sprecher, the CEO of the Intercontinental Exchange. These are the people that we're doing back. But Christine Forbes is going to do a session exploring blockchain and central banking. All right. So let's move along. Christine Forbes, remember, she, we said she was like an advisor to the Bank of England. And if you go down here and you look, it says she's in the Bellagio group. Well, I decided to go and look up the Bellagio group. All the Bellagio group is, is it was formed by Austrian economic, e economist Fritz Macklin, was was immediate predecessor to the group of 30. So the Bellagio group is the group of 30, what was, what became the group of 30. What's the group of 30? It's an abbreviated, uh, abbreviated to G30, an international body of leading financiers and academics who, who, which aims to deepen understanding of economic and financial issues. This is the group of 30. Let's look at who's in it now. But th these, are the, these are the type of people that are in this. This guy, remember, he's at the GIC, the Monetary Authority of Singapore. We know all about that. Austin Carnes. There's Mark Carney, who she advised. Um, and then as you go down, oh, Timothy Geithner from the financial crisis. He's the previous head of the, the New York Federal Reserve. Then there's Raghuram Rajan, who's on stage at Swell. And then um, and as you, oh, there's Larry Summers, who's an advisor to the Digital Currency Group. I think that's it uh, in that little grouping. Then I wanted to show you this. This is um, Kristen Forbes at the Bank of England standing right behind Mark Carney. I thought this was the perfect picture to illustrate. And I'm, I'm showing you all this just because I want you to understand all of these people tied together. Because Mark Carney, remember, he's the same guy that said the this. The dollar would be the global currency. Okay, the I'm dollar is the global currency. We know that. The challenge is that the U.S. share of the global economy has been... Uh, reducing uh, the dollar share of payments, not just financial assets, but payments. A lot of payments between countries that have nothing to do with the U.S. are in dollars. And what happens in situations like we're in today, where the U.S. economy, to its credit, is relatively strong, is doing better, and the Fed has been doing the right thing, which is, uh, you know, they've adjusted policy, they tightened policy as it was strengthening. Uh, now they're making, you know, the Fed is doing the right thing, but they have adjusted and policy is relatively strong. That means rest of world policy is strong, is tighter than it needs to be. And that feeds back on the U.S. economy in a way uh, that ultimately slows this economy. Um, and it leads to a substandard outcome. And in a world where you only have limited policy space, it's a dangerous place to be. And it's so the trade issues we're talking about are reinforced by the structure of the monetary system. Now, I mean, you've asked a big question, so just I give me have. a second to. But, right. okay. but now the issue is you don't just jump to something new overnight. Um, and the uh, what we want in a multipolar world, I think we'd agree that we've got the European engine, we've got the Chinese engine, we've got the US engine of this economy, multipolar world, you need a multipolar currency. The question is, how do you get there? And I laid out some ideas of how you would get there. And the bottom and line, more Governor, possible. is that is that all of the pressure on the different in growth around the world would not fall on the dollar exchange rate. Yeah. It would be spread out if it, if it was a global basket of currencies. What it would saying. be spread out. It was global basket of currencies. Uh, it's better for the system as a whole. It, it's better. To, it raises that equilibrium level of interest rates. Right. It gives central banks more policy, but it gives people who are watching uh, greater returns on the, on their savings. Well, certainly we're thinking about Governor Carney. Thanks All for right. joining us. Thanks and for good me. luck through the break. Okay, so she was advising him. She's also um, on the economic advisory panel for the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Now, we know who one of the people running the Federal Reserve Bank of New York is, and that would be Glenn Hutchins, who's also on the digital, uh, and it, uh, he's on the board of directors at the Digital Currency Group, which owns Ripple, um, owns a good part of Ripple, and as well as R, I mean, not R3, but Coinbase, as well as many other blockchain companies. 
Now, and Glenn Hutchins is the one that brought us, I'll start about right protocol here. Protocol by which we agree to do these, to conduct these transactions. So you use a series of protocols every day and you don't even think about them. Mm -hmm. You don't think about the internet protocol, you don't think about the simple mail technology protocol, you don't think about the file transfer protocol, you don't think about the high-text translation protocol. I go through them, mm -hmm. right? You just, you, you just make use of the technology and the protocols make it work. The people who really understand what's going on with digital currencies understand that putting these protocols in place, the blockchain protocol, the Ethereum protocol, the, uh, XR, the Ripple protocol, and then enabling those protocols to cause transactions to occur. Uh, and then those, tra and those transactions can be defined very broadly as not just moving same things of value, but anything that's got an information content uh, is extraordinarily transformative. The focus on the value of the token is distracting and uninformative. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button. And tell your friends and family that all of these people are connected and all roads lead to Ripple somehow, some way. Thank you for listening.